when we're describing nuclei, we usually use this kind of symbology. So we need to know how to interpret this. Here's a specific example, and here's the generic example. X here just stands for an unknown element. In chemistry, X is usually a halogen, but in nuclear physics, X is any unknown element. So this could be any unknown element. It doesn't have to be a halogen. Do you know what Z stands for? Is that the um, <coughs> atomic number? Yeah, we need to have that memorized. Z is the atomic number. And what does that tell you about an atom or a nucleus, if you know its atomic number? Um, the number of protons. That's right. Z is the atomic number, which is the number of protons. Now, it turns out that that definition is not quite general enough. That doesn't always quite work. A more general definition is that it's, this is the charge on the nucleus. Because after all, if you have two protons, you have a plus two charge, right? And if you have three protons, you'd have a plus three charge, because the neutrons don't contribute any charge. So even though it's usually good enough to think of this number, so the atomic number does represent the number of protons. But sometimes when that doesn't seem applicable, we can just treat this as the charge. We can just treat this as charge. Sometimes we'll just treat Z as the charge of whatever species we're looking at. How could we figure out the Z of an element? For example, how could you figure out what the Z is for phosphorus? Um, we would take the... Oh, I'm sorry, that was, a, that was a very vague question. How could you figure it out from the periodic table? Okay, so um, you would take the... Um, Even that was too big. Do you have your textbook with you? I don't have ah, Let me give you a textbook. Actually, I should have phrased that as, how can we read Z off the periodic table? So let's just practice that in one or two examples. I'm sure you'll be using the periodic table in the test. Yeah. All right, my work's falling apart. So what is the atomic number for phosphorus? So phosphorus is here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and its atomic number is? Uh, no, like 15. Yeah, by the way, here's the key. You can see the top number is the atomic number. That bottom number, the 30.97, that's the atomic mass or the atomic weight, which we're really not going to deal with very much, I don't think, in this chapter. That's more useful for chemistry. We're going to focus on this top number, which is the atomic number over here. So yeah, the atomic number for phosphorus is 15? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. How many protons does it have then? Uh, 15. Good. OK, that's all I wanted to look at there. How about, say, um, potassium? What's the atomic number for potassium? Uh, do you know what the symbol is for potassium? K. Yeah, capital K for potassium. Uh, so yeah, capital K for potassium is 19, not 39.1. Right. That's the atomic mass or the atomic weight. Notice that those are in units. So we talked about those. But the atomic number of potassium is 19. What does that tell you about potassium? That is 19 plus 19 charge. Or 19 protons. 19 protons. Yeah, 19 protons. It doesn't directly tell us the number of neutrons. It does tell us if it was neutral, it would have 19 electrons. But again, we're not going to assume here that we're always thinking about things that are neutral. In fact, we might just be thinking about nucleuses without any, ele without any electrons. So over here, helium has an atomic number of two. We can confirm that in our periodic table because it has two protons. So you can see that the periodic table, as you probably already know, is arranged by atomic number. Mm -hmm. Now this number here, A, is called the mass number. By the way, you can see that Z is in units of E. For example, this would be 2e. After all, the real uh, the charge in coulombs would be something like 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19. But in units of e, the charge here would be 2e. And the mass number is the total mass of the nucleus in units of u, in units of atomic mass units, not in kilograms. For example, what does this number tell us? Um, <coughs> that's 4 u. Yeah, the mass of the nucleus is 4. That tells us the mass of the nucleus is 4. This is not a number that is given specifically in the periodic table. The periodic table gives you kind of average masses. They, uh, notice that they're all decimals there. Uh, we're not really going to deal with that, I don't think, too much in this course. Uh, those would be the average masses if you take a bunch of different isotopes. But we're going to deal with one isotope at a time. Well, since, so what's the mass of a proton in you? And what's the mass of the neutron in you? One. Yeah, approximately one. So these numbers will always be integers when we're working with nuclear physics. These will be integers. And now we can do some calculations. So for example, how many neutrons does this isotope have? 
2. You can just subtract the 4 minus the 2. A common mistake, and you're pretty sure I have to do that on the test. A common mistake is to think that this top number is the number of neutrons, but it's not the number of neutrons. In fact, we can make a little equation. We can see that A is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. A would be the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So it doesn't tell you the number of neutrons directly, but if you subtract the number of protons, then it would tell you that. How about, let's say, do carbon-14? You've probably heard of carbon-14. Let's figure out how many neutrons it has. How did you figure that out? Because uh, the atomic number is six. You can see that in the parity table. Good. So that tells you that there's six protons. Right. Instead of turning the to neutrons. Right. So eight neutrons. What about the electrons? Well, remember the electrons have a, a mass of approximately zero. They're so light that they're negligible. So we only need to focus on the protons and the neutrons when we're thinking about the mass in most contexts, anyway. So here's a hydrogen nucleus. How many neutrons does this have? How many neutrons? Can you have some neutrons? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's totally legal to have zero neutrons. This is not an unusual nucleus. This is as the most common element in the universe, uh, just hydrogen. Uh, I think you might have learned in chemistry that oftentimes another name for a hydrogen nucleus is a proton. We often just call this a proton, and you can see why. It just is a proton with no, nu with no neutrons. A hydrogen nucleus, if you take off the electron, is just a proton. In chemistry, oftentimes we would write that as H+, plus and we call it a proton. And that's really just a hydrogen nucleus. What, what element of the periodic table is this? <coughs> hydrogen or carbon or phosphorus. It is hydrogen. How do we know for sure that it's hydrogen? Because um, there's still only one proton. Yeah. This is why Z is called the atomic number. It tells you what element you have. So if you look up in the periodic table, you'll see that the element with one atom atomic number of one is hydrogen. So this is hydrogen too. But how many neutrons does it have? One. Not two neutrons, but one neutron. What's the relationship then between these two symbols? These are what we call isotopes. They're the same. So what are isotopes? They're the same element with different numbers of neutrons. Isotopes are the same element with different numbers of neutrons. Another way of putting that is that they're elements with the same atomic number, but different numbers of neutrons, because the atomic number tells you the number of protons. So it's totally possible to have the same element with two different masses. You can have the same element with two different masses because there could be different numbers of neutrons. Why is it that the number of, why, why, are, why do we call it the same element even though there's different numbers of neutrons? Well, the neutrons have no charge, so they don't have as big an, an impact on reactivity as the number of protons do. The number of protons have a big impact on reactivity because they have a charge. The neutrons matter, but not nearly as much because they don't have that big a charge. You might remember this from organic chemistry. This is deuterium, or regular chemistry. This is D for deuterium. Du stands for the, two, the mass of two over here. We actually use this quite a bit in organic chemistry because it's similar to hydrogen, but different. It's an isotope, or it's similar to the most important isotope of hydrogen, but different. And for that matter, how many neutrons does this have? <coughs> Two. But is it still hydrogen? Yes. Because it still has an atomic number of one. This is tritium. This doesn't come up as much, but this is another isotope of hydrogen, tritium. Okay, so what can you tell me about this element? We figure out about this when you're ready. Um, do you want me to tell you which element is? That would be good? Yeah. So uh, this is. Is you your. Uranium. uranium. <clears throat> so it's uranium. Um, it has 92 protons. And then. Um,
235 minus 92. You can see that it's actually redundant to write both the atomic number and the symbol. Because if you know the symbol, you can figure out the atomic number from the periodic table. Or if you know the atomic number, you can figure out the symbol from the periodic table. But the mass number gives us very important extra information because it's got hidden in it how many neutrons there are. 